When humans are tired, they lie down. When they run out of food, they go to the shops. But how do urban creatures from mice to squirrels survive? Nature has adapted in ways that we could never imagine. Charles Darwin once said, building a better mousetrap merely results in smarter mice. Welcome to Nature's Guide on how to adapt in sprawling cities. My name is Yavraj Patel, and today I will take you on tour around the world to demonstrate how nature has not only survived, but thrived in the urban city. Let's begin our journey. My first stop on the globe, Asia, Jakarta, the largest city in Indonesia, but most importantly, home to over 450 brown spider monkeys, a critically endangered species with only 3,000 left in the wild. You would expect them to acquire their food, berries, bananas from their natural habitat, but does that even exist the same way it once did? If you've ever been to Jakarta, you will appreciate the local market stalls selling all kinds of produce, from exotic fruits to ornate carpets. But how are these two connected? How are stalls and monkeys connected? Well, these extraordinary intelligent creatures steal the tempting fruits, a prime example of adaptation. They may have realized there are easier ways to nourish themselves. Why climb a tree for bananas when humans have them readily available in a basket on the ground? My second stop on the globe, South America, Brazil, and the Toto Tucan. Within the expansive and bustling cities of this country, the majority of cars travel during daylight hours, and the Tucan has taken advantage of this. So how has it done this? Before the heavy usage of automobiles, toucans and other birds used to sing their songs throughout the day to attract a mate. But as more miles of road were built, millions more cars were in use, thus increasing congestion and noise traffic levels. Soon, the toucans began to notice that their mating calls were not as effective as they were before the era of automobiles. Careful research and observation showed that toucans adapted by making their calls in the early morning and late evening, just before and after rush hour. Not only has this bird implemented this nifty strategy, so too have many creatures in our country. Now, to my next stop on the globe, the African continent, the city of Cape Town, and the spectacular house sparrow. Many centuries ago, as Charles Darwin made his way to the Galapagos Islands, he came across this astonishing creature and noted it was relatively large, measuring 38 centimeters in height. However, it now measures circa 16, a 55% reduction in size. Why did the larger sized bird die out? Could it not thrive with its former size? As the temperature of the climate unexpectedly rose, birds struggled to live in the sun, and those that could not find shade and shelter unfortunately died. Over time, these birds adapted, allowing them to safely squeeze into the attics of 28,000 homes in Cape Town. Now, to my penultimate stop on the globe, the USA, New York City, and the white-footed mouse. So what's so special about these mice? Scientists analyzed the genomes of 48 white-footed mouse from across the city and neighboring locales. Researchers learned that a reduced availability in certain plants and insects in this magnanimous city had shown a change in the mice's digestion. These metropolitan mice had evolved genetically to manage urban diets such as pizza and fries. These fast food munching mice had adapted to the city's cuisine. Now, to my final stop on the globe, Europe, well, very close to us, Hertfordshire, home to over 8,000 brown squirrels. Did you know squirrels use vehicles to crack their nuts? 
they would take the tr they would take the nuts from the trees and cleverly place them on the road before for cars to run over to crack the shell open. It is hard to believe that a squirrel would have such high intelligence to master with such high efficiency and success rates. <coughs> How astonishing are all these facts? We have just trotted the globe and marveled at how highly adaptable nature can be. Now, I'm sure that you will agree, whilst it is most pleasing to see nature adapting, is it necessarily a good thing? Just think for a moment. What is evident is that we are speeding up the natural rates of evolution and adaptation through climate change, through overpopulation, and through the overconsumption of the Earth's resources. For every species that adapts so effectively, an equal amount will not. That is a risk we should not be willing to take. Humanity needs to make essential corrections to ensure that we live in tandem with the nature around us, instead of just brazenly bulldozing through it. I would like to leave you with this quote from the Sir David Dattenborough. Nature once determined how we survive. Now we determine how nature survives. Thank you.